So I will let us uh, let us get to this one by one. So a function f, so first what is a convex function? We have seen what a convex set is. So what is a convex function? So a convex function is a function f let us say from R n to R okay, such that f of lambda x or let me use alpha, alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y is less than equal to alpha f x plus 1 minus alpha f y where alpha belongs to 0 1 and for all x comma y in R n. So, for every pair of vectors x and y if you look at the convex combination of these vectors with the weight alpha and look at the function value value of f at the convex combination that is less than equal to the convex combination of the values itself. So, you here on the left hand side you have the function value at the convex combination of the points and on the right hand side you have the convex combination of the function values right. So, then you have an inequality between the two. So, the left hand side is less than equal to the right hand side this is what it means uh, for a function f to be convex. Now, if f is uh, so if you usually if you have you can you can actually say more. So, if so let, so let me write a lemma here. So, let f be c 1 then f is convex if and only if let me write this full if and only if f of y is greater than or equal to f of x plus the gradient of the function at x transpose y minus x this is this is true for all y y and x what does this say? What this say, this condition says is let me let us visualize this. What this condition says is so here is my here suppose my function f. Now, for this fun since this function to be convex what it what it means is that here is suppose a point x here is a suppose a point y this is this height here is f of x this height is f of y and I take a point like this alpha alpha I choose an alpha in 0 1. So, I take a point alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y. So, suppose I take this point right. Okay. Now, for this function to be convex what what must be the case is that if I take if I take alpha times f x plus 1 minus alpha times f y which is if I take the convex combination of the function values then that must be greater than or equal to the function ev evaluated at the convex combination of the points. So, if I take the convex combination of the function values then that gives me this height this gives this is actually alpha f x plus 1 minus alpha f y and what is this height? this height is simply f evaluated at alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y right. And sure enough this function is convex because as you can see we have this that this point here this value is greater than this height is greater than this height. Here. The height alpha f x plus 1 minus alpha f y is greater than the height f of alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y. So, a function like this is is is, is uh, this sort of function is convex. Now, what is this second lemma saying? So, for that let me just draw the same function here again ok. 
So, what this lemma is saying is well if I so let me just draw this in a slightly different way. Yeah, what this lemma is saying is take any point x and another point y. So, here is a point x, here is a point y. Look at uh, look at f x that is this, look at f y that is this. Now, in addition look at the gradient of the function at x. So, so, so what that means is I am looking at the slope the great the tangent drawn to the function at at x. Okay. So, it is saying look at the gradient of the function at x and now extrapolate the function linearly along this gradient. So, if you extrapolate the function linearly along this gradient, so at any point uh, at any point the value of the linear uh, at any point z like this here in between the linear the, the linear extrapolation would have value exactly this the height here right. So, this is this this height here is nothing but f x plus gradient of the function at x transpose z minus x. So, now what is this inequality in the lemma saying? This inequal the, the inequality in the lemma is saying that you take any point y, okay, you take any point y like this. So, this sort of point y and look at the value of the linear extrapolation from evaluated at x or the linear approximation to the function at x evaluated at y, okay. So, we'll take this linear approximation, evaluate that at y, and that linear approximation, the its value at y must be less than the value of the function itself at y. It must be less than f of y. So, in this figure, f of y is this height, and the 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 value of the linear approximation is actually this it is it is it is this particular it is this it is negative actually it is under below the below the axis right. So, this is so this this tells you that f of y is definitely greater than this than the value of the linear approximation. So, what this means is what this lemma is effectively saying is that this is true for every x and y. So, which means you can take any point x draw a linear approximation to the function at that point take any other point y, look at the function value at that point and look at the value of the linear approximation evaluated at that point and compare the two. It must be the case that the function value is greater than equal to the value of the linear approximation. So, geometrically what this means is that the if I take the entire linear approximation to the function at any point, then it must be that that linear approximation is actually a linear under approximation. So, this linear approximation is necessarily an under approximation means it, it always underestimates the value of the function means if I if I wanted to estimate the value of the function using a linear approximation like this it will always be less than the true value the true value being f of y right. So, so what this lemma is saying is that a function is convex if and only if this holds means that if a function is convex if and only if the linear approximation to the function lies completely under the function it under approximates the function or the and the other way around also if if uh, if the if the if the linear approximation of the function underestimates the function then it has to be that the function is convex if the linear approximation of the function underestimates the function at uh, if linear approximation of the function evaluated at any point underestimates the function, then it has to be that the function is convex. Okay. So, this is what, uh, so this is an equivalent uh, 
equivalent uh, uh, def you can say characterization of convexity. Some people use this also as a definition of convexity. Of course, it does not hold when the gradient is not when the function is not differentiable and in that case it, you would not be able to take the gradient, but for uh, for differentiable function this is equivalent to convexity all right. Now, what does this uh, what does this give us? So, this gives us the following simple simple fact ok. So, let us let us write look at this so I will state this theorem maybe I should write this in red because this is an important result ok. So, before I go there actually I should mention so, here is a convex function now what is a convex optimization problem? A convex optimization convex optimization is involves minimizing a function f subject to constraints g i of x less than equal to 0 for all i from 1 to m and so these are inequality constraints and equality constraints that are linear. So, equality constraints must take the form A x equal to B ok. So, here the function f and the function g i these are all convex So, if you it is very easy to see here from this case that this if you look at the constraints or the feasible region the x such that g i of x is less than equal to 0 for all i from 1 to m and a x equal to b this set s is actually a convex set. So, when g i are is are convex and the equality constraints are all linear then the feasible region is actually a convex set. So, then what we are doing is effectively minimizing a convex function f over a convex set s right ok. So, that is what happens in a convex optimization all right. So, now let us look at what happens to KKT conditions for convex optimization. So, theorem consider a convex optimization convex optimization problem minimize f x subject to g i of x less than equal to 0 for all i from 1 to m and a x equal to b where f and g i these are in C 1 and convex. Now, suppose so suppose there exist lambda i greater than equal to 0 and um, say so I will and a theta theta j ok. So, the matrix A here let us suppose the matrix A is um, in R p cross n ok. So, there exists a theta in so, let us suppose this theta belongs to R p such that if I take the gradient of the Lagrangian with respect to x evaluated at x star lambda theta this is equal to 0 
लैमडा आई जी आई ऑफ एक्स स्टार इक्वल जीरो एंड ए एक्स स्टार इक्वल बी सो आई टेकन द ग्रेडियंट ऑफ द लग्रांजन with respect to x star uh, with respect to x evaluated at x star lambda and theta now the lagrangian here will be just for clarity let me write the lagrangian also so you have f plus summation lambda i uh, gi of x plus now the way we wrote it earlier is we took every constraint and multiplied it with its corresponding lagrange multiplier a simple uh, the simple thing to do in this case would be to simply do theta transpose ax minus b that that effectively does the uh, does the same thing so this constraint ax equal to b can be can be equivalently written as as ax minus b equal to 0 and once it's written in the form ax minus b equal to 0 it it comes in the form of uh, edge j of x equal to 0 in this sort of form and then we have to just multiply the edge j by theta j so what i'm effectively doing uh, i'm effectively doing that by taking theta transpose uh, ax minus b so that gives me a sum of theta j times the j through of ax minus b all right okay so this is my uh, uh, this is my lagrangian for this theta okay okay so yeah so suppose there exists a lab, uh, a lambda this la lambda greater than equal to 0 theta in rp and an x star in rn such that these kkt conditions are satisfied so what are the kkt conditions here gradient of the lagrangian is equal, uh, with respect to x at x star is equal to 0 complementary slackness holds between for all constraints and equality uh, inequality constraints sorry i forgot inequality constraints are all satisfied and equality constraints are also all satisfied so in short kkt conditions hold okay then x star is a global minimum of the optimization problem so let's take a moment and absorb this this is what is this theorem saying take any convex optimization problem written as minimize Uh, f x subject to g i of x less than equal to zero, so a x and a x equal to b, where f and g i s are continuously differentiable and convex. And suppose you can find Lagrange multipliers and a feasible point x star such that the gradient of the Lagrangian with respect to uh, x evaluated at x star lambda and, the, uh, and, the, uh, and theta is equal to zero. Lambda i x i lambda i times g i of x star is equal to zero. That means complementary slackness holds, and the point x star is feasible. In that case, it must we must have that x star is a global minimum of the optimization problem. So, notice that I have not said a word about about constraint qualifications. Constraint qual it does not matter whether constraint qualifications hold or do not hold. what matters is that you are able to somehow solve the kkt conditions if you can solve the kkt conditions the problem it must be that you have a low, you have a global minimum okay so you have to you need so for that all you need to do is make sure you have a point that is feasible and and that and you have lagrange multipliers appropriate lagrange multipliers that satisfy complementary slackness and gradient of lagrangian equal to 0 once you have that you once you have that and you are uh, you have solved your kkt conditions you have a global minimum okay this is obviously an extremely powerful result but it turns out the proof is actually very simple so let us uh, let's quickly do the proof of this okay let's do the proof of this so 
we just wrote that f of x at any point x is greater than equal to f of x star plus gradient of f at x star transpose x minus x star ok. So, let x star be as above and x be any other feasible point ok. Then we must have that f of x is greater than equal to f of x star plus gradient of f at x star transpose x minus x star. This is what we just showed because f is c 1 and f is convex this must be the case. But then what is gradient of f at x star? Well, that can be written through your through through the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian is telling you that the gradient of f at x star the gradient of f at x star is is equal to the negative of if you look at this here uh, the gradient of f at x star must be the negative of the sum of uh, Lagrange multipliers times the gradients of the constraints right. So, just putting that in give, will now give me that this is equal to f of x star plus summation lambda i gradient of g i at x star i equals 1 to m plus plus now I need to take the gradient of the equality constraints. So, if you can verify that this actually becomes the same as A transpose into theta ok that that is what this becomes ok. So, this is equal to uh, uh, this this what I have written here is just the gradient of f at x x star and I need a negative sign outside this. So, let me put uh, a negative here times then I have x minus x star all right. Now, what does this uh, the whole thing transpose yeah. Now, let me expand this out I will by doing that I get f of x star minus now I get uh, some lambda i i equals 1 to m gradient of g i at x star transpose x minus x star plus theta transpose a into x minus x star sorry there should be a minus minus theta transpose a into x minus x star ok. Now, remember x is any other feasible point. So, a x should therefore, be equal to b x star is feasible. So, therefore, a x star is also equal to b. So, this term theta transpose a into x minus x star is simply. So, this term is actually equal to theta transpose b minus b. So, this is actually equal to 0 ok. So, this term is equal to 0. So, this term is is not present in our problem ok. So, we are left with therefore, f of x star minus sum from i equal to 1 to m lambda i gradient at x of x star or gradient of g i at evaluated at x star transpose x minus x star ok. Now, gradient of g i evaluated at x star transpose x minus x star. Now, this is a similar to the term that we had we had above here which came from the convexity of the function f right. So, now we remember g i itself is convex. So, consequently 
since gi is convex so we know that therefore gi of x is greater than or equal to gi of x star plus gradient of gi evaluated at x star transpose x minus x star right so this and this is true for all x feasible since gi is convex this must be the case all right now look at now let's uh, let's look at this term therefore so take this gradient of gi evaluated at x star transpose x minus x star that's therefore less than equal to gi of x minus gi of x star okay so now what can we say about this difference gi of x minus gi of x star the problem you can see that all i know is that x star is feasible and gi of x star is also feasible so uh, x star is feasible and uh, x is also feasible these are the only two things that i know so therefore for these for, since both of these points are feasible what i do know is that gi of x is less than equal to 0 gi of x star is also less than equal to 0 but they are both less than equal to 0 that does not mean that the difference is the is also less than equal to 0 or or greater than equal to zero nothing can be said about the difference from here right so so we need a little bit more information and that little piece of additional piece of information actually comes from complementary slackness so we already we have also have complementary slackness so far we have used the fact that x star is feasible and that the gradient of the lagrangian is equal to zero we will now use complementary slackness so complementary slackness so by complementary slackness by complementary slackness if gi of x star is less than 0 then the corresponding lagrange multiplier is equal to 0 so consequently if i look at if i look at this summation here this summation actually involves only those lambda i's for which gi of x star is exactly equal to 0 so i'm going to rewrite this summation now so that gives me f of x is greater than equal to f of x star minus some i in a of x star lambda i gradient of gi at x star transpose x minus x star now a of x star remember is the those indices those those constraints which are active okay now now go back to now if a, uh, now go back to this this equation here that we wrote out let me put this in a box let me wrote we wrote this out Look, go back to this green box equation and right now look at this uh, this equation in the case when x star is actually a point for which gi of x star is active so look at right look at this equation for those those constraints that are active which means gi of x star must be equal to 0 for such point for such constraints so if gi of x star is equal to 0 then then I, I then this term actually disappears then this term disappears this term is gone okay so if gi of x star is equal to 0 this term is gone and then what i am left with is therefore gradient okay for for i in a of x star i have gradient of gi evaluated at x star transpose x minus x star less than equal to gi of x and what is gi of x x being feasible ensures that gi of x is less than equal to 0 so this is indeed less than equal to 
Now, lambda i's are greater than equal to 0. There is a minus sign outside and then g i of x, uh, x star transpose x minus x star is, is less than equal to 0. What this put together means that f of x is greater than equal to f of x star plus something that is positive which means that f of x is greater than equal to f of x star. Now, what did we do? We said let x star be as above and x be any other feasible point. It, it can be any other feasible point and from there we got that f of x is greater than equal to f of x star. So, x star was my point that satisfied the KKT conditions, x was any other feasible point and we got that this inequality must hold. So, consequently it has to be that x star is a global minimum. So, if we are able to verify KKT conditions, we automatically get that, uh, that the point that satisfies the KKT conditions is, is in fact a global minimum of your optimization problem. So, this is, so this is how you reverse the implications that, that have led us to KKT conditions. So you use, you, ha, you use an optimize, you, you work with, if you are working with an optimization problem that is convex. All you need to do is simply check if the KKT conditions hold and then, then you get that the point that the point at which the KKT conditions hold are is a solution of your optimization problem. Okay. So, with this we, I will end today's lecture. We can then uh, I will I will tell you this the same fact in a little bit more abstraction uh, next and I will also tell you about convex optimization duality in convex optimization in the next lecture. Okay.